What's going on everyone? Welcome back to YGOPD, your Yu-Gi-Oh! Professional Development, and today I have a Sun Avalon deck to show you. I've been messing with this on the side, on and off, the past month here and there. Um, shout out to my boy Sunny P. He's been helping me do a lot of extensive testing with this deck and kind of get to a build where I feel pretty comfortable showcasing it. Uh, I still think there's a little bit to go on this, but I'm always a big fan of just more of the pure just sun seed combos i think it does a lot i think it's still one of the most underrated one card starters in the game right now that puts up a lot of different types of interruptions but with all that said i want to give a quick shout out to our new public sub to the channel donner dagger for hire thank you so much for subbing if you like what i do and want to stick around consider subscribing it really does help the channel liking commenting sharing all that does go quite a long way to help boost the algorithm as well but with all that said we'll go ahead and hop into the main deck the extra deck, and showcase a quick combo at the end as well Okay, starting with the main deck, we have three Sun Sea Genius Loki. This is the best one card starter in the deck, does everything you need. Access to this one normal vanilla level one monster does everything in the deck. After that, we are on three painful decision. Um, I like this starter a bit more than unexpected die. I get unexpected dies free and doesn't take your normal summon, but we have a few other things in here that can conflict with unexpected die with the adventure engine, depending on when you want to sequence things to insulate your board. So I just like being able to search the normal summon just a little bit better. And then the last of the starters for the main combo that also get you to sun seed are two unexpected die and one, one for one. That's pretty much it for the main starters for the sun Avalon combo. For the rest of the engine as it relates to the Sun Avalons directly, we have the, I guess you could call them kind of engine requirements, but more so just pieces that you search out throughout the combo. One twin is probably the closest thing to the hard brick that you have in the deck. One sewing is what you get off Dryas, and then one bloom is what you get off the Link 4. I'm a big fan of that other Link 4 and just searching this card. It really just carries a lot of weight, more than what I realized, um, and the special effects that it has in Damage Step 2 are really cool. Um, just has a lot of different unique purposes and uses so that's it for the sun avalon piece for the rest of the deck it's a couple different engines interspersed and then a good chunk of non-engine that you have some flex spots for starting off with the brave package we have two enchantress and then two right um, you could potentially bump this up to three i originally was maxing out on everything but i wanted a little bit of diversity in terms of hand traps and different other slots um, and if you know me personally you know my luck with brave is probably the worst out of everyone on the planet minimum i draw three brave cards in any deck i play brave no matter what so i wanted to try to reduce that just a bit and then of course after that we just have the one griffin the one fateful adventure and the one draco back not much really needs to be said about that that is quite standard outside of just the two and two and then from there the other engine we are running is a small souls package one two illusion of chaos and one magician soul shout out to my boy grant for hooking me up with the souls package to kind of showcase and test with this um, you can play more of this i was originally on like i said a full brave package plus three souls and two illusion but i think the format has sped up to the point where if you really want to do something like that you need other non-engine cards droll is still in the format here and there and the gimmick puppet lock is rampant so you can't be just completely dependent on engines like these to get you where you need to go the last little engine we have in here is the Therian engine that you do mid combo. We play one Lily, one Regulus, and one Discoliseum. You could also play a cross if you want. Hard opening the cross just basically gives you an extra interruption as you do mid combo. Unfortunately, it just doesn't do anything on its own. It's dependent on having a Therian with you. So I didn't like it as much and just used it as another slot to cut to make room for other things. Again, if you want to play cards like Small World and Kurikara, I would bump up both Regulus and Lily to two. Those kind of help with certain small world lines and other things like that. But um, I just kind of prefer this stuff. You could also, again, cut the Braves, cut the uh, Souls package, and just do like triple prosperity plus even more hand traps. So there's a lot of ways you can go with this deck, which is really nice. Um, after that, the rest is kind of more... I guess non-engine, defensive cards, consistency type things. Uh, so I am on the cross out package. It's been a while since I used this. I think the last time I messed with this was in Punk Gold Pride. The unfortunate thing of this deck is it does lose to a lot of different hand traps um, at a lot of different points. So having something like this to help insulate is important. 
And then we are on two droplet. Yes, I'm aware this is not probably the best cross out target, but with cards like Sanctifier in the meta that can't be targeted and just activate in your draw phase to really lock you out of the game, I wanted something to help address that. And that's really where droplet comes in and it can have the most value in this deck since you can send the brave cards or stuff to make Lily live, different things like that. So you get some value off of it. After that double Fenrir, this was the card I mentioned that can conflict with unexpected die. Uh, I just think Fenrir is an amazing card. It's still a powerhouse of a card. This plus like the Brave package can kind of just end games on its own. And I really just wanted to abuse it. This is also another card if you are considering Small World that helps out with a Small World bridge between this Theory and King Regulus and the Sun Sea Genus Loci all being the Earth is what they have in common. So if you want to go that route, you can use this as well. After that, these are more standard cross-out targets that are kind of the rest of the deck, which is two Triple Tactic Talents. I think that's probably the best one you can play in this variant. Uh, two Infinite Impermanence, and then two Ash Blossom, and lastly, just two Droll and Lockbird. So that's it for the deck. A clean 40 cards. You have a lot of different ways you can take this. Yes, of course, you could play the Rika version. I'm not saying that that this is better than that. It's probably not, but if you want to play something a little bit more pure like I do, I just enjoy the Sun Seeds as it is um, and wanted a break from just doing Rika. This is kind of a cool way to just mess around with. So again, that's it for the main deck. Like I said, 40 cards. Uh, I'll showcase the extra deck and then a bit of a combo as well. Okay, for the extra, the only downside of this is the extra deck is quite tight. You don't have a ton of flex spots, but starting with the big links and working our way down, one Underworld Goddess and one Access Code Talker, you really are only locked into plants from the extra deck uh, during your first main combo line. After that, you have some freedom to make a few different things. And when you have spare things like, you know, the Enchantress, Griffin, souls like you have a lot of spare bodies on your field you can work with these two are decent ones to go into both access code and underworld goddess for the link fours as they relate to the main combo one bang a lancer and one of the big sun avalon the biggest tree we have that searches the trap on summon um, i'll kind of talk about how you bridge into this through loci in the combo uh, and then after that, two Melius, you do need two for the combo, unfortunately, but that's the only bad thing about running, I guess, this more pure variant is a lot of your slots are taken because of the combo. After that, we play one Jasmine. You only need one in this build. There are some builds that run double Jasmine and abuse things like Naturia Rose Whip, and you can do that kind of stuff, but I just, I didn't really want to add any extra hard bricks that like if I draw them, I just, I can't really use them because I've already used my normal summon or different things like that, but this is definitely an option. For the Link 1s, we have uh, Triple Dryas. This is pretty much needed in almost any build. When you do the combo, you really only go through two Dryas and uh, two Healer. So you can get away with two, but again, because Cash is still in the meta, I know Diabolosis is gone, but playing as a going second into a card, like if Unicorn's on the board and you only had two and two, and they know to rip one of them, you just are kind of dead in the water. So you do need three of each, both of the Dryas and of the Healer. And then the last two to kind of round it out, one Thrasher, this really helps with OTKs to be able to gain um, 800 attack, you know, times the link rating of something is really, really cool. So this is like, if it's a link four, it's going to be 32 plus the eight, putting it at 4k, just OTK out of nowhere. And then one link Karibo, just something random to kind of get rid of the souls off the board. Honestly, if you want something different than this, you probably should go with a link spider instead, even just to make sure that that uh, right token goes away if they stop you mid combo and have an effect monster to utilize either for underworld goddess or access code so that's it for the extra deck and i'll go ahead and cut and showcase you a quick combo of how we play the deck okay i'm going to showcase the quick combo of what the one sun seed does a lot of builds like this there's a lot of different combos and ways you can take it i still think it's important to at least showcase it in this type of a build you're going to start with the sun seed genus loci whether it's a normal summon or special off of either die or one for one any way you get this onto the field and that is the entire way you get the combo rolling you'll start by linking this off i'm going to try to keep things a little bit visible here as much as I can. So we'll go ahead, get that off, and go ahead and throw out the driest to the field. And then I'll kind of adjust things a bit so that everything can kind of fit on screen here. So you're going to go ahead and make the driest. The driest will trigger on summon to go ahead and get you a copy of the Sunvine Sewing from your deck to your hand. From there, you'll activate the Sewing. Sewing specials any Sun Seed from your deck to the field. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about zone placement because obviously this will look a little bit awkward here, but I'll try to make sure it's about as clear as I can get. So you'll go ahead and special the Sunseed Twin from your deck. 
And then from here, what you will do is you're going to have the Sunseed Twin as Chain Link 1 to avoid things like Ghost Spell, and then the Dryas as Chain Link 2 to gain the 1,000 life points back that you took from the Sunvine Sewing, and then special another Sunvine from your extra deck to the field. So you're going to go ahead and get Healer, and then Twin goes ahead and special summons the uh, Sunseed Genus Loci back. So you basically want to make sure that when you're doing the combo to start off, whatever you're having here and getting Twin off Sewing, that your zone underneath Dryas is empty so you can get the Healer. Uh, healer can go ahead and give you 300 here should you wish. And then from there, you'll go ahead and link these two off to make your first copy of, well, I should say your only copy of Jasmine. Again, very important that these two zones are clear. From there, you're going to go ahead and link each of these off. The important thing to note is that you're using the correct material, both for Dryas and for Healer. Specifically, uh, Dryas can be any level four or lower plant monster, so you'll go ahead and use the Twin. And then the other one for the second Healer, you're gonna go ahead and use the Loki. Healer requires the normal monster. Uh, you want to make sure you have room under your Jasmine for that. Here's where Healer makes the most sense. Um, you need to gain the 300 here. Uh, so you'll have gained 600 total and then trigger Jasmine to go ahead and add any plant from your deck to your hand because you gained life points. From there, what you'll go ahead and do is add the copy of Lily Borea. You can special the Lily Borea and then equip the Genus Loci or any other plant to it. It doesn't really matter. Then you can use Lily's effect. Go ahead and send the Sun Sea Genus Loci to go ahead and get a copy of Therian Disc Coliseum from your deck to your hand. And if you want to go ahead and activate it now to get the copy of Regulus, you can do that. I'll just put that here so that's visible. From here, what you're going to do is go ahead and link all three of these, the uh, Lily, the Dryas, and the Healer, to summon a copy of Melius. And then on summon, uh, and you could even, if you want, obviously, to make things insulated, we'll go. you can uh, summon the Regulus right after this resolves. That's the quickest point you can do it. So you can go ahead, use the Melius. The Melius is going to reborn another Sun Sea Genus Loci. What matters the most is wherever you summon the Melius is you have at least one of the zones open to go ahead and put another Melius next to it because, again, none of these plant links, uh, except for a card like Jasmine, are hard once per turns. So from there, what you can go ahead and do is I'll shift this up just ever so slightly. You could special the Regulus and go ahead and equip the Lily from your grave to it. And then from there, what you can go ahead and do is link the Genus Loci and the Jasmine away to make your second Melius. So we'll go ahead and put that next to the other Melius there. That will trigger on summon and get another Sun Seed Genus Loci again back from your grave to the field. And here we're pretty much wrapping up the combo. What you're gonna do is take one of the Melius and one of the Loci, get rid of those two, and you specifically need to make Bangalancer first. And then from there, what you can do is link the Mangalancer, treating it as either a one or a four here. It's gonna be treated as a one plus the three for the Melius to go ahead and make a second link four which is going to be our big tree using the big trees effect to go ahead and search a copy of the Sun Avalon Bloom from your deck to your hand. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then after all that is said and done, you can go ahead and summon the Bangle Monster back from Grave using its own effect by banishing links that add up to four. So you'll go ahead and you can get rid of a Melius and a Dryas here. Any combination works. I'm just gonna do the three and one. They banish from your grave. And then that gets summoned back, and that's the bare bones combo off of one card. You have a few different interruptions here. Um, so on your opponent's turn, you have an Omni Negate through the form of Regulus. You have a Compulse in the form of Bengalancer. And then Sun Avalon Bloom is kind of like an Imperm, but it negates all the effects of monsters your opponent currently controls. So it's essentially like a board-wide Imperm for one time, and then has the effect in a damage step to give any Link 4. You control the ability to gain attack of whatever points to it. So right now, this would gain 2,500. Um, and obviously, if you wanted to put other things next to it, like the Brave Engine, if you see that again going next turn for an OTK, like that with either that or a card again like Thrasher. And then on the crackback on your turn, you can use this effect, tributing Bangalancer to pop cards your opponent controls up to the monster's link rating that you tributed. So you could pop four on their turn, but at the bare minimum, it's still an Omni Negate, a Compulse, and a board-wide Imperm, which is pretty, pretty good. So that's the idea for the deck. That's the basic combo. I really like exploring and just messing again with true Sun Avalon, true Sun Seed combos. I really like Bloom. I like the Sun Avalon links. I just wanted to do something that makes a little bit more use of them and pivots a little bit differently from the Rika line. So with all that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Later.